there was a gentleman by the name of Pyroj Pimpongsen that was involved, um, who was, who, you know, again, his, he, his heart was in the right place with regards to Manchester City, and he, he worked hard, and uh, we'd been introduced to the Abu Dhabi team that were looking at the acquisition, and uh, representatives, there were several different representatives, and, and actually Caldur and Al Mubarak and, and some of the other guys weren't, weren't part of that initial program was a guy called Solomon Al Fahim if you if you were speaking to him on the phone yeah that's right yeah <laughs> yeah no so so what had happened really we pr we built a prospectus to sell the club they were interested in in other football clubs and we had to sell the idea that Manchester City was a good investment that was our job what and was the selling point in your mind well i i i think the uh the the, the work that this club does in the community it's at the heart of this city now it's, it's quite clearly has a wonderful relationship with the um, city of manchester uh you know the ceo sir howard bernstein is, a, is an avid supporter of, of of a football club being at the heart of a gener of a regeneration so that was that was good uh, so yeah you could bring public sector and private sector together but which ultimately led to land and development and, and of course some of that's now coming to fruition and it's a big club you know let's not forget this is not you know this is a big club some have suggested that newcastle were on the shopping list of the shake but because it was landlocked in the city center that went against it do you do you believe that's the reason why he came to city ultimately well I, you know i think if every club had had a benefit there were some benefits and there were some challenges this one also had some challenges um but uh but yeah i was aware of which clubs they were looking at and i wouldn't want to discuss that openly but but yes the, the, they they liked what we the vision they liked that we were had the opportunity to start looking at this as a global brand as a as a brand that could as a proxy band for abu dhabi and 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 then we started to meet the the key stakeholders and Simon uh, and 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 Caldoun and the guys and the new board members came to visit and and we really then realised that uh, we, we'd got it right and and we knew then that we were going to make this a big bold statement in the world of sport not just football we knew then that we got something that was going to shock everybody and again why me I I don't know. I would never profess that it was talent. I would just say it's for good fortune, good fortune for all the fans, good fortune for the players, the staff. That you know we we'd had some lean times, but then we knew that this was going to be our time. We've all seen with our own eyes how gentle and how caring. I think is the only word I can think of that these owners are and the way that they want to do things right, etc. When you were in this process of looking for a buyer, were you taking that into account as well? Was that part of what you were thinking? Are you, were you just looking for the, the highest bidder, so to speak? Oh, gosh, no. I, I Absolutely not. It wasn't about that. It was really about somebody who cared for the football club. And, and I think, you know, it's very difficult when you're not, a, you're not born a blue right so we always we're always quick to criticize well he's not a blue is he um you can quickly become a blue i, I can attest to that and i'll can i'll guarantee you now there are a lot of abu dhabi uh, and, and emiratis who have become blues and they are big blues and and that's great because that's what we're all about right we gotta you gotta develop and grow and and, and build overseas so they are passionate about it they want to win they're ambitious and they knew coming in how passionate the fans were about this club. This was, there was nothing plastic about any of this. This was industrial Manchester, the Northwest, hundreds of years of heritage and history. And it was a wonderful story. And it was one that if, it, if we did it right, it was going to add to the, to the value of that story. Do you feel proud of what you achieved because you've obviously played such a, a key role in this transformation of the club from what had been for many, many years, let's be honest, you know, a failing club and now, you know, there's so much potential here and so much goodness felt by the fans and between them and the ownership. Do you feel proud of your part in that? Yeah, there's a couple of points in there. I think... I think uh, to say it was a failing football club, I think it was a. It's, it, you know, and again, I refer to John Wardle and, and Alistair McIntosh and the team. They, these people worked extremely hard. Their resources were different. 
different levels and and i'm sure they everybody looks at me and or or this organization and says well i you know it's down to the money well th- th- you can argue a, a, a different case to that so so with respect to them it was a great football club it was just caught in a in in, in some tough situations and they went through some change i am proud of what i've done but n- that's not uh, proud of what i've done at manchester city alone these there's what i feel i'd managed to do was build a team of people who believed and who could see the vision and and really you know a leader sets the vision gathers the thoughts doesn't try and bash anybody around the ears with the vision you want it to be theirs you want them to take ownership of it you want them to move forward and and we i you know we've got guys so when things have have gone wrong or you felt passionate about them and now everybody's going to want me to ask you about the the, the Mark Hughes banging your fist on the table and the, the Uwe Rosler United Hall of Fame and, and the, you know, the, they've bottled it and all the other things that you're remembered for. Explain to me what was going on in your mind when these things were happening. Well, I, you know, there's, there was, there's a catalogue there of about four or five incidents that uh, seem to be uh, will be my nemesis, and I'll carry with them forever. Uh, and I often wish I had the chance to, to to do over if I knew the impact. But the impact was only based on um, their interpretation of my passion. I was angry at AC Milan for the way that they treated the football club with regards to Kaka. Yeah. It was probably, in retrospect, it was disrespectful to make public statements the way I did. And and I and I obviously regret that um making a mistake with the uh with uve rossler uh, my biggest concern was had i dishonored uve rossler or had i dishonored the supporters club um and 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 deeply regret making a mistake i think we all do but I, i'm a, also a great believer in if you're not trying hard, if you're not making mistakes you're not trying hard enough and so th- there are no excuses for any of these, Ian. Um, there are my interpretations, and there are the press's interpretations. But the thing that I always felt when those interpretations were manifested through the media was the embarrassment that I'd caused the fans. And, it, and in the end, um, I, I, I really felt that I didn't want to continue being the scapegoat of Manchester City. And I didn't want to continue being the the point of attack because really that reflects on the fans and, and the, it's their club. Were you surprised at the level of that attack? No, because I knew what ha- what was behind it and I knew how it was all working and I knew what, who was, you know, what was going on. But, but I can't, I couldn't control that and I can't control that and I wouldn't manage that. Uh, I am who I am. But I was, I, was, I was getting more and more concerned that it was becoming about me than it was the football club and the fans. And that's not fair to them. It's their club. And they, and they deserve better than that. And there's no need for me to be that centre of attention. How were you dealing with it at the time? I suspect you being an emotional person that it was getting to you a little bit, was it? Yes. I, you know, football's a strange world and I came into football and I didn't realize and understand the power of media and and how they worked and approached the world and and I took some bad advice but I, but you have to trust that advice uh, and I've done that all through my career you ask an opinion and you take that opinion and you use it if you use it and it comes back to haunt you you can't blame the person that gave you the advice you can only blame yourself for taking it so th- that's you know i was told to say do uh, that that's what this business is all about i wasn't i was naive in some respects with the with the press but as time was going on and that was starting to you know you you become more aware of of what that was all about and it so it's like a snowball effect doesn't it yeah yeah it does and and um i i always look back on my time and and some of that exposure personally it was devastating to me 
professionally, it was a wonderful learning experience because I'll never make those mistakes again. You know, in order to protect your own integrity and your own dignity, saving yourself of that embarrassment at a, at a professional level is, is something you never want to go back to. Once that snowball had reached a certain critical mass, did you feel it was inevitable that, that you would have to go? I mean, I'd heard rumours that you might be going at the end of the season that you went at anyway, and then this Mrs. Anua thing came to the fore. Do you, did you feel it had already reached that critical mass and that that, that, that eventual snapping point was inevitable? Um, that would be an easy way out, wouldn't it, for me to say yes. Um, the, the truth of it is, if I had my choice and knowing now what I know... Um, I wish I'd stayed for 20 years if I'd have been given that opportunity and allowed that choice. But the pressure and the and 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 you know the stress that you put under um, that may not have been the case because you know, I was I, I made some mistakes. I have no excuses for my actions. Did you write and uh, you know this this supposed email? Did well, I, I'd I'd rather not I'd rather not go into that because that implicates others and and that wouldn't that's not my style. Um, but I was the CEO of the business, and, and it was my responsibility uh, to stand up and be counted. And, and uh, you know, in, inadvertently, in fact, I had a text message off Dr. Anua on Sunday. We, we, still, we still communicate back and forth. I think we both realise we didn't need it to get to where it got to. But, but that, that, in a way, there, isn't, there was no excuse for my action. And, and again, it was regretful. It was, it was foolish. Um, and I, uh, you know, I, I was, it was not the sort of thing that a leader of one of the biggest sports organisations in the world should do. And I knew that it was time to take that responsibility and, uh, uh, you know, take that away from the football club. They didn't need that. But here you are now. You were invited back to see City win the, the Premier League, which I think was probably only fitting given the part that you played early on in the, the introduction of the new owners, etc., um, what, what's the the Gary Cup now? Are you a different person? Do you do you still wish you were here, or have you moved on mentally as well as literally with your job? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't wish I was here because I'm I'm not, and that's that. I, I've come to terms with that. I still kick every kick and head every header and and tackle every tackle on on television, um, and I still keep in touch with all the guys and 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 uh, you know Caldoun and I still text backwards and forwards and speak to each other so so you know i i uh, I, w I wouldn't say i wish i was here uh, because i'm not and i have to move on um but i am extremely proud of everybody at the football club and, I, and every time i look at something uh, i can remember the moment when that was initiated and and when it comes together like it did on sunday uh, and and in the drama that unfold, unfolded on Sunday, you, you become you 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 can only be proud of what it is. Um, it was a great part of my life, and I'll never ever I'll take all of it to my grave. And I still keep in touch with a lot of fans. What I will say is I didn't expect the warm welcome that I did receive on Sunday, and the commentary from even tonight at the former players' dinner. Um, to be acknowledged and to be thanked by the th hundreds of people, uh, and even Caldoun, that, that that shows you the class of the owners, and and how fortunate we are at this football club to have such great owners, Sheikh Mansour, and uh, and and you know Sheikh Mohammed and Caldoun. They are so committed to this football club and making it successful. They are extremely supportive of the, the uh, everybody at this football club. They know how hard everybody works, and I was just proud to be a part of that. Ian and I'll and I'll I'll never look back with one ounce of regret for having been here, and and I can only be thankful that a lot of the stuff that we put in place has manifested itself to success.